Well, good morning, Riverbend. Well, as you guys know, we've been going through a campaign called Foundations for the Valley. Uh, and it's a really critical campaign to the future of us as a physical church. Uh, and it's pretty cool that we talked this morning about building your kingdom here, right? That's pretty much the theme of what we are talking about is building four walls so that we can continue to live out his word and continue to live out his spirit through us. Uh, so thank you, Joe, last week took over for Foundations for the Valley and was able to help share just once again some of the things that we talked about at our banquet uh, on the 15th. And I want to just kind of hop back through where we have been. Uh, and then we're really excited this morning to announce our commitments uh, that have been given to us. Uh, and we're just so blessed about the work that you guys are doing, the work that he's doing right now. Um, so as we talk about where we've been, uh, we have been at this shirt site since 2011, uh, and this has been a great site for us. But as all of you know, uh, our lease ends May of 2025 for this location. Uh, so we want to be good stewards of what he's given us. Uh, we want to make sure that we continue to prepare for what the next step looks like. Uh, so we have a couple different milestones that we're looking for uh, to be able to make sure that we properly prepared for that. Uh, we've come to you as a congregation to ask uh, for you to consider giving towards Foundations for the Valley. Uh, with that in mind, we have three main uh, financial milestones that we're looking for. Uh, our first, our victory goal would be $600,000. Our faith goal is $700,000, and a miracle goal would be $800,000. We believe, based on the research that we've done in the area, that these amounts would allow us to be able to purchase a property uh, and have a mortgage that is near uh, what we currently have uh, here as a lease amount. Some of the big things with that would be not only would we be able to keep our uh, annual budget about the same, uh, but we would start working towards owning a property, which means that eventually that would be paid off and allow us to continue to do his mission uh, with about $5,000 more a month uh, once we're able to pay off that location, which would be absolutely amazing. Uh, so with that being said, we've asked for commitments uh, from you guys. We prayed about it uh, over the course of several weeks. Uh, really excited to announce the amount of commitments that we've received. Uh, so we talked about our goals, 600000 700000 800000 And if you haven't uh, yet given and committed to the campaign, there's still time to do so. Uh, but we're going to talk about the amount that we've committed. Uh, and we're really excited that we have had this amount of commitments, $6 in commitments. Oh, wait, I think there's more, Robin. Perfect. So $56 in commitments, $456 in commitments. Oh, there's a comma. $6,465, $56,000, and $656,000 in commitments. So we are blessed by what you guys are doing. Um, and committing is the first step, right? We know that committing is the first step. Uh, and we need God to get to do work through. I know talking to a lot of you guys, uh, these commitments were big. Uh, we were excited to see the commitments. Uh, I know even my wife and I, Emily, committed a number that uh, is a stretch goal for us. It's a number that God's going to have to work through us in order to make sure that we're able to achieve that number. Uh, but we're excited about these commitments, and we know that there's still commitments coming in. There's still families praying about it. Uh, there's still people even outside of the church praying about giving to the Foundations for Valley campaign. So uh, we thank you so much for the commitments that you've given. And last week, we took our first big give offering. Uh, and as we talked about at the campaign, we really want to get this kick started uh, to make sure that we have a down payment for that next facility and the next four walls of Riverbend. So what we've asked, if possible, is that you give 10% of your total commitment during one of these two big give Sundays. So last week, we had our first big give Sunday. Uh, not ready to announce what we received last week yet. We're actually going to combine the two big gives and talk about it next week during our big reveal. And my hope is that as we big reveal, we're also able to talk about a new commitment number, right? Uh, my goal and hope is that uh, the Lord continues to work through us. And whether it's $5 a week, $10 a week, whatever amount that we continue to receive commitments. Uh, because Riverbend has moved in my life. Uh, I know that it's moved many of your lives. Uh, and we want to continue to make sure that Riverbend has a physical space to do that. So... There's a couple of different ways that we can give today. Uh, the first one is you can text Riverbend to the number on the screen. There's also the Riverbend community app uh, where you can give. Uh, where you can mail it physically to this address. You can go online to riverbendonline.org backslash give. Uh, or based on feedback that we've received from you, 
uh, we've actually moved the giving boxes into the service area. Uh, so you'll see there's two wooden boxes at each corner of the church um, sanctuary, goodness gracious, uh, in each corner of the sanctuary. Uh, so you can actually physically give a check, uh, or if you haven't filled out a commitment card yet, there are commitment cards available on your table uh, if you're at a circular table. Uh, if not, you can also go back to one of those circular tables, grab a commitment card, place it in the box, and we'll put it into Planning Center for you. Uh, but just so thankful for what you've done uh, to help continue to support Riverbend. Uh, and we're really excited next week to be able to reveal that big give amount. Right now, we're going to turn over to uh, the next slides, uh, which are going to show us a couple of videos and updates about Riverbend. Good morning, Riverbend. I'm Melissa Schletter, your Director of Communications. Here's what you need to know this week. Women and Friends of Riverbend are invited to a morning of conversation and creating on Saturday, November 11th from 10 to 12 at Rebecca Escott's home. Add a touch of whimsy to your Christmas decorating with a horse for your open sleigh or a partridge for your pear tree. Refreshments will be provided. If you would like the address or more information, you can contact Rebecca at escotts at rcn.com. We are so excited to see how God has provided for Riverbend through the pledges from our community. On Sunday, November 5th, we will have our big reveal and celebrate how God is moving in our midst. Our next child dedication will take place on Sunday, November 19th. If you're interested in having your child dedicated, you can contact Pastor Joe at joe at riverbendonline.org. Baptism is an outward expression of what Jesus has done in you already. We consider baptism to be a big celebration and want to hear your story of why you want to be baptized and what Jesus has done for you. If you're interested in being baptized, you can fill out our application at riverbendonline.org slash baptism. Community is essential for our spiritual growth and development. This November, we will be looking at three primary components necessary for a healthy biblical community to be fully known, encouraged, and sent. We can't wait for you to join us for this next sermon series. Night to Shine will be happening on February 9th, 2024. We are so excited to be able to partner with the Tim Tebow Foundation to show the love of Jesus to the special needs community in the Lehigh Valley. We are in need of many volunteers to make this event a success. If you are interested in volunteering, you can do so by scanning the QR code on the screen or going to www.lehighvalleynighttoshine.org. Well, good morning. good morning. We are so glad you are here with us today. My name is Joe. I serve as one of the pastors here at Riverbend. In a lot of ways, today could be considered the next generation Sunday as we get to celebrate all that God is doing in our midst and in our ministry through the next generation. And I just want to welcome each and every one of you. We are so grateful that you're here with us today. If you're a first time guest, I want to extend a special welcome to you. Our Sundays don't normally look like this, but today it falls on what we uh, call a family-style gathering fifth Sunday, and so it's an opportunity for every person who's part of our church to be a part of our gathering together, because we really believe the next generation is the church of today and tomorrow. Can I get an amen? amen. And we believe that, and so this is an opportunity for us to live that out in a visible way together. And so as we've been in this campaign, one of the th in the series as well, one of the things that God has done is just shown up again and again and again. And, and one of those ways is through looking back at how God would work in the lives of those who actually are serving as leaders in the campaign. I think about Hunter and Emily Price, and one of the key in impact persons in their life, the one that invested in them as young college students, as they were in their early, early years of their marriage, was a guy named Stephen Willis. And this guy, you may have seen him. He was at the banquet uh, with us. But Stephen Willis was someone that would, in their church, that would pour into Hunter and Emily. Stephen Willis uh, would lead a, 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 not only the church, but a campaign in the church that he serves at, and then would start his own ministry to help churches do what we're doing. And he's been a vital part of what it is that we've been able to do together through this season. And so he's been our consultant through this whole time, Stephen Willis, great guy. But one of the things that I've admired as I think about him is the fact that we're benefiting from the labor and investment that he made in Hunter and Emily Price. We, we get to be benefactors of that. Yeah, we can clap for that because that's, that's a good thing. 
And I, I don't want you to miss that because it, it's so important that we don't lose sight of how God works. Uh, w- pouring into somebody that then will go into pour into others, and then they will go into pour into others is, is the way it's meant to be. And then someone else that showed up at the banquet was this guy, Mark Stinzi. And Mark Stinzi, he was the pastor uh, that we, Amy and I, the church we attended called Parker Hill. When we knew we were going to get married, we ended up st- being in uh, the same state for our engagement. Um, and so the last uh, year of our college time, we were at a, a school called Clark Summit University. And Mark Stinzi uh, was a key part of our college years as a, as a couple, as we were moving from dating to then moving to engagement and then to marriage. And so he showed up at the banquet, was at our table. And not only that, but one of the staff members, and they now work together, a part of LCBC Church, Mark Fitch, who married Amy and I, was the guy that would uh, reach out to me throughout this whole time, checking in on us about the campaign. And then right after the banquet, the next day, he sent me a text saying, how'd it go? Thinking about you, praying for you. There's power in those types of relationships of having people pour into you as you pour into others and how those relationships continue till this day. And that leads us to what the psalmist says. And I want to be mindful of our audience today, so I'm going to keep this moving because we have a lot of parts to today. And mainly, I want you to just take away take away what God is doing in the next generation and our part to play in that as well. So Psalm 78, let's read this out loud together. We're going to actually read this psalm uh, together, starting in verse 1 on the count of three. One, two, three. My people, hear my teaching. Listen to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth with a parable. I will utter hidden things from of old. Things we have heard and known, things our ancestors have told us, we still not hide them from their descendants. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power and the wonders he has done. He, Jacob, and established the law in Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach their children so the next generation would know them even the children yet to be born, and they in turn will tell their children. Then they would put their trust in God and would not forget his deeds, but keep his commands. They would not be like their ancestors, a stubborn and rebellious generation whose hearts were not loyal to God, whose spirits were not faithful to him. This is the word of the Lord. And so as you think about what's said here, what's declared here, there's power in the next generation. But not only that, but the generation before them telling the next generation of the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord. There's a part that each of us has to play. Whether we have children or not, we have a part in playing to tell the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord to the next generation, which is a real emphasis for us through foundations for the valleys because we want to build our foundation on Jesus but we also want to not lose sight that part of that foundation is the next generation starting all the way from when they're babies and infants and as they continue to grow moving to the elementary ages to the middle school to high school to college to young adulthood and everything in between there's a part that we get to play in that and it's incredible to think about. So a couple of things I want to give to you, because again, like I said, there's a lot of moving parts today, so I want to be mindful of that. But one generation will tell another of the greatness of God. We're, we're meant to do that. We're meant to tell one generation the greatness of God. This is actually how I came to faith in Jesus. Many did this for me. Going back to my mom as a single parent, doing that for me. Uh, other youth leaders and pastors and even teachers at my uh, high school showing me and telling me the greatness of God. So here's the next part of this. What is the story of, of your life telling and who are you telling it to? So what is the story of your life? Is there something that's compelled you as you've responded to the love of God because we love because he first loved us But is there a part of who we are that we're loving him with all that we are, that it's changing us from the inside out, that there's something compelling 
about who we are, not because we have all the things that you would think would take to make you successful, but rather you have been enamored by who Christ is, and it's changed you from the inside out. And it's leading you in the way that you go about your life. And everything that you do, you're seeking to make much of Jesus. You're seeking to join him in that. And then the next part of this, in sharing the God story, we help the next generation move from stubbornness to surrender to God. One of the things you can't escape as you read the Old Testament, especially the Psalms, is that God talks again and again about how the ancestors of the nation of Israel, how their hearts were stubborn and rebellious. And one of the instances that comes up again and again, and we're actually going to hear about it in just a minute, is when they were set free out of Egypt. But he said to the next generation, remember what I did in Egypt because your, your parents not only forgot how I moved there, but they also weren't willing to move with me. Don't be like them. And so when you remember what I've done and you remember their inability or their decision not to join me, it moves us from being stubborn to being surrendered. That's one of the things that we help one another with. And so I want to encourage us as we think about, even today, what we're going to hear, to to remember the part that we're playing and and how God's at work in our ministry. And to help us do that, we're going to hear from different people throughout the, the different areas of ministry emphasis here. And the first person, as we think about the next generation, is the one and only Erin Harris. She's going to come up, and she has a story story she's going to read for the kids and good news is because we have some really great tech people uh, you're going to be able to see the pages on the screen and so I want to invite the kiddos to come on up to the stage if you feel comfortable or you're going to be right down here so if the kiddos want to come right here come on up come on up come on up don't be shy come on up come on up kiddos come on up yeah, you know, right? Yeah, I love that, man. I, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't shy away from hugs. You, you go right there. So all the, yep, everybody right here, everybody right here. Okay. Whoa. Can you guys hear me? I'm not used to doing it with a microphone. So. All right. Good morning. Are you guys? There? anyone awake you are okay all right you're a little sleepy I get it I get it okay well before we get started I have a question to ask you guys okay how many of you raise your hand if you have ever heard an important family story maybe your parents your grandparents have told you a story that was important to your family yeah like maybe the day you were born or maybe when you moved Oh, so you have a family story. One more. Do you have a family story? You're not sure? I'm sure there are, but yeah. So we're going to read a story today called Moses and the Very Big Rescue. And this story, I know you guys know this story, but this is a very important story to God's family. You don't know it? Well, maybe you don't know this version. That's a good point. Okay, but I'm sure you know the actual story. You've seen it on Superbook? Okay. All right. So we're going to read Moses and the Very Big Rescue. I'm going to need your help at times, okay, with the numbers. So you guys can shout out the numbers when you see them, okay? All right. You've probably learned to count upwards. One, two, three, four. But when they fire a rocket into space or when something amazing is about to happen, we sometimes count downwards. Three, two, one. Boom, boom. Exactly. In this true story from the Bible, God counts down to the very big rescue of his people. God's people had a very big problem. Pharaoh was the king of Egypt. He had made them his slaves. They had worked all day in the hot sun to make bricks for Pharaoh's buildings. 
So they cried out to the Lord for help, and God heard them and planned a very big rescue. God told Moses, go to Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go. God said, I will do amazing things to show him who is really the king of the world. Pharaoh will know that I am the one true God. So Moses went. Moses said to Pharaoh, let my people go. But Pharaoh said, no. Moses said, every time you say no, God will send a terrible disaster. But Pharaoh didn't care. His heart was stubborn. His heart was hard. God's great countdown began. What is this number? Yes. All right. Moses held out his staff over the great river Nile, and it turned to blood. But Pharaoh was stubborn. His heart was hard. He would not let them go. Okay. You're with not yet. Let my people go, said Moses. No, said Pharaoh. So God sent thousands of hopping, croaking frogs. Hey, let my people go, said Moses. But Pharaoh said, no. And God sent millions of whining, itching gnats. And Pharaoh was stubborn. His heart was hard. Okay. Let my people go, said Moses. No, said Pharaoh. So God sent clouds of buzzing, flitting flies. Let my people go, said Moses. No, said Pharaoh. I know, so God sent a sickness on the cattle and the sheep. But Pharaoh was stubborn. The Lord had hardened his heart. Let my people go, said Moses. No, said Pharaoh. So God sent a plague of painful, purple, pus-filled boils. Ugh. Some of you are still with me. Four. Let my people go, said Moses. No, said Pharaoh. So God sent huge, hurtling, horrible hailstones. Let my people go, said Moses. No, said Pharaoh. So God sent swarms of noisy, hungry locusts. Let my people go, said Moses. No, 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 said Pharaoh. So God sent a dick, deep, inky darkness so no one could see anything. But Pharaoh was stubborn. The Lord had hardened his heart. Okay, what comes before two? Let my people go, said Moses. No, said Pharaoh. And Moses had a sad heart as he left Pharaoh because he knew that the last plague would be terrible. Moses told God's people to get ready to go because that night the Lord would bring death to every house in Egypt. The firstborn son would die. God's people all ate a special meal that night. Blood from the lambs they had eaten was put on the doorposts of their houses. So when the Lord saw the blood, he passed over those houses, and God's people were safe. But in every other house in Egypt, there was death and great sadness. Moses said to Pharaoh, let my people go. And Pharaoh said, yes. God's people set off from Egypt to the land God had promised them. But Pharaoh was stubborn, his heart was hard, and he chased after God's people with his army and his chariots. They are trapped in the sea, thought Pharaoh. I will destroy them all. Oh, no, that's not going to happen. So God had reached the end of his countdown. Ready to count down from 10 with me? 10, 10 9, 8, 8 7, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Moses held up his staff, and the sea parted before him. All God's people walked through the sea and got safely to the other side. But when Pharaoh and his horses and chariots tried to fall, the sea rushed back and they were drowned. God had rescued his people from Egypt. Moses and the people danced and sang a song together. There is no one like you, Lord. You do great miracles and wonders. You keep your promises and save your people. Praise the Lord.
Thank you guys for counting down with me. Before we go sit down, remember we said that this is a special story for God's family, right? Yeah. In fact, God tells us, like Pastor Joe said, God tells us a lot of times in the Bible to rem remember this exact story because he knew it would be easy for us to forget. Do we forget things? Yeah, we do. So okay. So it's easy for us to forget, right? So he knew it would also be important for us to remember one second. If he knew if it was easy for us to forget, he made ways for us to remember, right? Do you guys know that it's important when you remember the ways that God is good in your life? Yeah. It, helps, it helps grow us closer to God, right? So before we leave, can we say a prayer to help, our, to help us remember, ask God to help us remember? Oh, thank you. Can you guys say this with me? Dear God... Help me to remember the great things you've done. Great things you've done. Can we do that all together? Dear God, help me remember the great things we've, you've done. Ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. Dear God, help me remember the great things you've done. Okay, it's really fun to talk about those stories of what God's done in our life. And maybe as you guys go home today, you can ask your moms and dads to tell you more stories of what God's done in their lives. Would that be good? You have a question? You forgot Tiger Shark. That's sad. All right, you guys can go take a seat. Thanks for listening. It, man, I love that. Great job, Aaron. Next generation, listening, speaking into what's going on and how God's worked in the past and how he's going to continue to work in the future. The next thing I want to do is I want to introduce uh, the, the person who's helping to lead what we call the climb, which is our middle school and high school ministry, and that's Drew Dolan. Let's give it up for Drew Dolan. And he's going to share a bit and Hopefully have some friends come up and share with him as well. And so he's going to help us. To Thanks. See what's going yeah. On. yeah, man. Uh, and Nathan and Danny are going to join me up here. We'll hear from them in a bit about what Riverbend's meant to them. But uh, thanks, Joe. My name is Drew Dolan. I'm uh, currently helping lead the CLIMB student ministry. And youth group has been a huge part of my own faith journey. I did not grow up going to church. I... Uh, Started going in high school, got pulled into youth group, um, stayed because I thought the girls were cute. Um, <laughs> ended up marrying one of them, so it worked. And uh, yeah, just that really where I found uh, to know more about Jesus, where I decided that yeah, what God says about him is true, that uh, the gospel is true, and really set my life on a different trajectory. And so I had uh, a big impact by youth group, but I initially had no interest in being a part of helping with youth group until one Sunday uh, during kind of the early post-pandemic uh, re regrouping as a church, those, those kind of strange months where I looked around and I saw there's some tall young people around. And during the pandemic, we had all these families start coming or some people grow up or some people come back um, who were in youth group. And all of a sudden there was this great need for uh, a youth group, and Keith Keppel had uh, relaunched youth group at, at Riverbend, or maybe re re relaunched. I know it had many iterations, uh, but he launched it as The Climb. And uh, so I've been helping serve alongside him, and then eventually um, he had to step down, and I'm, I've been for the last year helping uh, lead this uh, youth ministry. And the main goals we have are to help the students connect with one another. You know, there's a million different things they can do to, to hear about God, to have faith um, through Young Life, through Awana, through whatever else you guys are involved in, other churches, youth groups, um, but really to be a part of Riverbend. We wanted a, a space for them to connect, and we also wanted to provide a space for them to connect to adults that weren't their family members here, who they could go to with questions, who they could see what it looks like to, looks like to live out a life of faith, and you know, we have a lot of really fun times. We have some uh, lunch together every month. Uh, we sometimes do events together, and I've gotten to see just the amazing way that ways that God is working in and through 
the students here. Um, some of them have just such an amazing, uh, deep biblical knowledge of, of scripture. And uh, they also have this heart for God where, you know, as a middle school, I had no, I mean, really, I wasn't a Christian yet. But even when I became a Christian in high school, like wanting to share the faith, my faith with other friends, like I already see that becoming a real thing in a lot of these students' lives. Um, they serve in a ton of ways here at Riverbend. Um, most everyone is involved in VBS or foundations or some kind of uh, ministry where we see this generation pouring into the next generation. So we've got some in worship. We've got some that uh, help at Ripple. Um, and uh, I, I know we've all always pulled them in to help with setup uh, before certain events. The, the most memorable in my mind is when we all showed up before Easter uh, Easter egg hunt to pick up goose poop, and we've got like a couple pounds of goose poop that we uh, collected so that the kids didn't have to run through that. <laughs> it's great. Um, but yeah, I, I, on a personal level, I have two young kids, uh, three and five years old, and um, I, I see how they are looking up to guys like Nathan guys, and girls like Danny, who and you know they they want to be around them, they want to be like them, which is just so like such a joy for me because. You know, sometimes as a parent, it's like kids don't really want to listen to you. They don't want to really act like you. You wonder if anything you're doing is working. And then you see that when they're a part of this church community, they have people who are following after God, and uh, they, they want to be like them. And so uh, it's, been, it's been beautiful for me to see how that uh, flow from generation to generation is happening here at Riverbend. And so I was just going to ask, uh, Nathan, if you want to go first, uh, what, what impact has Riverbend had on you and your faith since you've been coming? Mike morning um so it, it's helped me um uh like it's helped me be more consistent with the like getting into my bible and it's um it's helped me uh talk with other people about god and not just with my family yeah that's awesome yeah thanks nathan for sharing and then danny how has uh, river been made an impact on your life and faith um, I'm going to use an example here. Uh, I don't know how many of you have heard about the thing in Maine, the shooting. My cousin was shot in that incident. And we were getting a bunch of phone calls trying to figure out what was going on with him because he got shot. And one of my aunt called my mom, and I will always remember that she said, Pray for him. Your family has more faith than anyone I know. Please just pray for him. That was amazing to me because it, Riverbend has helped me grow with my faith, not just inwardly, but outwardly. People are willing to talk about God with me. I'm being invited to several different church establishments and things like that to help share this. And I just find that amazing that people want to be immersed um, in God, and I love how Riverbend and Climb has helped my faith grow. So. Thanks. You know, we'll be praying for your cousin, too, and your guys' family. Um, so, yeah, just thank you all for how you've also poured into the students. I mean, the, the reason that they continue coming to VBS and foundations and serve is because of the adult volunteers that they know that help make that a reality for them. And, yeah, just, just really grateful to see what God is doing there. So, uh, yeah, let me know if you're wanting to get involved. Either you have a, a student or if you're wanting to help uh, pour into these students. How's he doing? He's good? Hey, uh, Drew, do you mind just praying for her cousin real quick? Jonathan? We're going to pray right now for that situation, all right? Yeah, Father God, we just ask you to be with Jonathan and, and everyone who is involved in this tragedy up in Maine. And God, we just pray that you are... Uh, yeah, just using the Kennedys in a powerful way to be a light uh, where they, they may just not know where to go. Uh, God, we know that you have offered a hope beyond hope, a hope beyond the darkness of this world. And uh, we're so glad that you've put people like the Kennedys in a place where they can reflect that hope to people. Um, so help, help Jonathan as he uh, goes through this and recovers. Help the people who are there dealing with uh, what this all means and help them to turn to you and to put their faith and trust in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks so much, Drew. Hey, great job, guys. Let's give it up for these guys again. And uh, one of the things we want to do, too, is we want to hear from what's going on with Collegiate Ministry. And so I'm going to invite 
Grace Lee and friends to come up. Uh, yeah, let's give it up for these guys. Good morning. <laughs> As Pastor Joe said, my name is Grace, um, and I work with a ministry called Crew. Um, I'm sure you've, if you've been coming to Riverbend for a while, you've heard of it, whether you've seen me up front or know the Hannahs or even all the college students that come every week. Um, but Crew is a ministry that exists on college campuses to bring the gospel to today's college students. Um, and for us, it's right here in the Lehigh Valley, whether it's Lehigh, Kutztown, Penn State, Lehigh, Lehigh Valley, and all the other colleges. Um, but I'm sure our students have heard our tagline is, um, or like our driving force, um, is where we want to be a diverse community where the gospel captures hearts, transforms lives, and then launches men and women into a lifelong adventure with him. Um, yeah, that, I think that's kind of like what we always fall back to. Um, and so that can look like deep community um, where students are welcomed in, they're known, they're seen, um, and really just impacted by a Christ-centered community. Um, it's life-on-life -life discipleship with student leaders or peers or staff, um, and then not just for them to grow in their faith, but also to pour out and share their faith with other people. And so, yeah, when we were invited um, to share a little bit about what God is doing um, through, Lehigh, through and in um, Lehigh Valley Crew, we thought, what better than to bring up students who have been impacted um, by our ministry as well. And so we have Juliana and Billy. Um, I'll let them introduce themselves in a bit, but they are both seniors at Lehigh. Um, they've been involved in our ministry since freshman year, so about four years, um, and really not just as participants, but as student leaders who are faithfully leading um, and representing our movement. And so, yeah, I'm going to hand it over to them, and then they're going to share a little bit about what which God has been doing in their hearts and lives um, while at college. So. Hi, everyone. I'm Juliana Kilgore. I'm a senior, as Grace said. Um, I'm originally from California, which is helpful from the standpoint of it was really important for me to find community when I came to college um, because I came in not knowing anybody, and actually I first stepped foot in Pennsylvania when I got off the plane to quarantine <laughs> for freshman year. Um, so that was kind of crazy, but um, just for some background, growing up, um, my parents are divorced, and my dad and that side is Christian, and my mom's side is not, and they live about 45 minutes apart. So when I was growing up, I was involved in a local church, but I was only able to make it at most half the time, and sometimes even less depending on how custody stuff works, you know. Um, and so it was really tricky for me growing up in my church community because it didn't feel as inclusive or as uh, encouraging to me because I was only able to be there so often. Um, and I, I really found myself going to church out of obedience in my faith rather than because I wanted to be there. And when COVID hit, I was actually leading a Bible study at my high school. Um, everything else that I did, every other extracurricular was stripped away. All the school stuff that I had been grinding for the entirety of high school was stripped away. And I realized how important it was to get involved in a community. So I actually reached out to Ed um, and a couple of the other folks and hopped on a Zoom call in April before I'd even <laughs> chosen to come to Lehigh. And just, I had never felt so um, comfortable in a group of people. I'd never felt like people really wanted me to be there and really cared about um, who I was and where I was going in my faith. And then since coming to Lehigh, um, I've really seen that community of crew and of Riverbend as well um, encourage me in my faith. In uh, There are three main things that I didn't expect to do in college, but then ended up doing. Um, one was discipleship, so one-on-one -on -one discipleship. I've been discipled for the past four years, um, and I've been discipling another gal for about three years and just started discipling. Um, a second. And so that was something that I never expected because I had never really experienced discipleship. I also didn't really expect to lead another Bible study, um, but God really challenged me to that, and it took a lot of 
prayer and help from the leaders in crew um, to encourage me in that because I was really nervous about that and saying the wrong thing and doing the wrong thing. And then the third is that I never, ever saw myself going on summer mission. I think you know about this. I had never expected to go on summer mission, but after going to Panama City Beach, which a lot of you have heard about, um, and feeling this call to missions and living missionally and sharing the gospel, uh, I felt challenged to go overseas to Sweden for three weeks between my sophomore and junior year. And that was so crazy to see how the body of God works um, throughout the whole world, but also the way that God really fulfilled my needs of financially, of fundraising for that. I had, I think it was like four weeks or four to six weeks to fundraise $5,100. Um, so just as an encouragement, I mean, Riverbend already has done so well, but I have seen in my own life the way that God can work financially, and it's just really encouraging to see um, your guys' faithfulness through that. Mm. That was awesome. Um, hi, guys. I'm Billy. I think I know some of you guys, but if I know, um, nice to meet you guys. Um, <laughs> story about myself, I met the Lord through Young Life when I was a high schooler. Um, my senior year, going into my senior year, I went to Young Life camp, heard the greatest news of all time, and it changed my life forever. Um, and I'm just riding that journey now with him. Um, living life to the full is something that I really desire to do because that's what he desires for all of us, as we talked about a couple weeks ago. He wants us to prosper, um, and that means stepping into the design that he has. And I think crew and the, the ministry that God has had set before me, before all of us on campus, um, has really helped me dive into who I truly am, which is fully known and loved by Christ. Um, and I'm so thankful that I can call this my first church family. Um, Riverbend has done so much for me, and I'm forever grateful for you guys. Um, and I'm excited to see where God continues to take us. But I think specifically on campus, um, what I've experienced is just doing life with people um, day in and day out, being able to live with guys like Brandon and Mateo, um, Ed inviting me to his house, getting to know his kids so well. Um, being able to do life with others day in and day out, I think has really changed everything in my life. Being able to be fully loved by Christ through the love that he's put in their hearts. Um, and I think being able to be real with people, confessing, um, just being open about life, has really helped me grow. And I think when it comes to crew as a whole, I think it's just a community where we get to do life together and point one another to this church and to this body that God's doing such a beautiful work in. So I'm really excited to see what he continues to do, um, not just in my own life as I'm being sanctified day by day, but in the lives of the others around me. Um, he's doing a good work and I'm excited to just continue to share it with others. And this place is a great place, being able to share this good news to the valley. So, yeah, that's a little bit about me and what God has done on campus. So, thanks, guys. Billy, can you speak to uh, what you're doing with the athletes? Just because yeah. I think people would be interested to know that. On yeah, campus. so um, it was really weird. The sophomore, it was sophomore year. I was just laying in bed, and I just couldn't sleep because I was just thinking about people who are athletes and how we really don't communicate like on campus. There's just a big divide. So it's really on my heart to be able to love people well who are in athletics. I used to play sports, but I blew my knee out, which is okay, praise God, because I still am involved with the basketball team doing things around there, which is a joy. But God has really been working in so many cool ways and bridging that gap this year. Um, we see around 16 people come to a Bible study on Sunday, and there are around, I'd say like, 10 teams involved already with two people. So just seeing them live and do life together, pouring into one another, it's going to spread like wildfire. So I'd appreciate prayers for the hearts of their teammates and that they can continue to just be real and honest with one another as they do life with Jesus. So, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Well, as they are going to make their way to their seat here, I want to just uh, say to you guys, it's a good example, uh, Grace uh, was a student, actually, at Lehigh, and God called her to join the ministry team with Lehigh Valley Crew, and just, I love how integrated she is into our community here in our church, and then as these two have shared and, and really have poured into it as well, I love even 
how we're seeing people, um, college age, and I, I mean, I've always loved the college students and the next generation, but I just want to applaud the next generation, specifically the college age, for a really, um, I would call, sincere desire for the things of God. And even if they don't have all the answers and they have questions, they're leaning into those conversations. And it's beautiful to watch. It's beautiful to watch uh, people, whether it's taking steps of like baptism, like that really got baptized, or serving in a variety of, of different ways in our community and saying, hey, we want to know what it means to actually be a part of a church. And I love being able to tell them, well, we can tell you what that's like, but I just want to tell you, it's an imperfect place. I want to let you know that on the front end of it. It's a beautiful thing, but it's beautifully imperfect. And it's helped, I think, even that authenticity of working together and to learn from one another. So we're so grateful for these guys. Let's give it up for them one more time. It's beautiful. You guys can go ahead and grab a seat. Put that back on. Hey, I'm going to invite the Hutchinsons back up. And as we think about what God's done here, um, the other thing I want to mention to you as well is, and I know they don't really want me to do this, but I'm going to do it anyways, is that we have... Uh, the, a lot of the basketball ladies from Lehigh right here. If you're part of Lehigh Ladies Basketball, can you just throw your hands in the air, wave them like you just don't care. We are grateful for the part they're playing in our communi community as well as how uh, they've developed a great relationship uh, with Mark and Monica Tramontina. And just, man, we're grateful for the way in which a uh, relationship like that is happening. And then we're starting to see different athletes represented here, um, whether that's lacrosse. We got new lacrosse players in the house. Throw, throw them up real high. Throw them up, yeah, come on, come on, come on. And that, that's just a couple I know. I know there's some basketball players here too. If you're a basketball player, raise your hand for me. Yeah, there we go. We got some right there. Okay, ballers. All right, well, listen, what we're going to do is we, we want to close this time out um, with a word of prayer, and then we're going to sing a couple of songs. But here's the deal. I want to tell you. It's an audience participation type of ending, meaning no matter how old you are, you get to participate. Don't be too cool for school. That's what I'm saying, all right? Imagine you're like a child who's just been on your fifth Reese's Pieces <laughs> a pack, and you're so amped up, all right? Just get, get in that headspace, all right? Get in that headspace. Not that we have any sugar addicts in the house, but... As I've been trying to talk to my son about, he's like, I'm not a sugar addict. Okay, all right, okay. <laughs> the first step is to, to admit, don't, don't live in denial, Ray, all right? We're gonna, hey, well, let's pray, and then uh, we'll, we'll uh, go out in this song here. Father, right now, we, we love you. We thank you for this time. God, I'm grateful for the good work that you're doing in our midst. Lord, whether that is through just people represented here, God, in, in the way they've been impacted by others, and then pouring into the generation's that are coming up behind, Lord, and then, and then beyond. And then I think about our, our foundations ministry here at Riverbend, which is uh, those in, that are six months to fifth grade. And then I think about the climb, our middle school and high school students. And then I think about the college age. And it's not limited to those who uh, are at Lehigh or at Crew. But, Father, we thank you for all the, the college age people in our, our ministry and the ministry of crew as well, Lord. We're grateful for what you're doing on the campus of Lehigh. And then, Lord, we thank you for even the young adults. I think about how Grace Lee was up here, and there's so many others like Grace here um, who have said yes to you, Jesus, and have faithfully and courageously come after you to love this place called the Lehigh Valley uh, that she's not from, but to say, I, I love this place and I love these people. So, Lord, I pray that we would join in on what you're doing here. We're grateful and we're thankful, Lord. And may we be the people who tell one generation and to the next generation the praiseworthiness of you, God. And so, Lord, we love you and we trust you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.